Netanya on the Mediterranean coast isn't widely known outside Israel, but it's famous in personal protection circles. It's home to the headquarters of the International Krav Maga Federation. The Federation has trained some of the world's top bodyguards. The man who trains them is Eyal Yenilov, chief instructor of the Federation. And Eyal's training never loses focus on the life and death consequences of Krav Maga. Krav Maga is an integrated system, which is to prepare a person to deal with real, real type of conflicts. Eyal starts our training, hard. They're really doing on this one here. They're attacking targets. Oh, they're attacking multiple yes, targets? multiple targets, multiple opponents. From my years of fighting, I'm used to strict rules. You fight one guy in a confined space with a ref. Now, Eyal sticks me at the bottom of a Krav Maga dog pile. And all I have to do is fight my way out, any way I can. It's not a good feeling being surrounded by 12 guys. This exercise isn't designed to teach us a specific technique. Instead, it's to teach us how aggression and effort are a big part of self-defense. Krav Maga is all about using anything you can to get out of a dangerous situation, and I can't see anything more dangerous than being surrounded by these guys. All right. <laughs> It's really like a bar fight. I mean, punches, kicks, chokes, anything. You gotta get the guys off you and quick. Use anything you got. Poke them in the eyes, hit them in the balls, elbow to the head. You wanna live, they wanna kill you. Then Eyal ups the stakes. If you're going to be a bodyguard, you can't just watch out for yourself. So now I have to go into the dog pile with a client and bring him out safe. It's like being a human pinball. Going through 15 people is one thing, but this simulates possibly going through hundreds, if not thousands. But training in the gym isn't enough. Krav is a real-world fighting art. So Eyal takes us outside to teach us a move to help counter any kind of attack. It's called the 360 defense. The most common attack, especially with the hand, is a circular attack. As we'd just seen, an assault could come at us from any direction. This move would work against them all. The technique is this choppy motion. Open hand is a little bit better because it's better in other space and it's faster. And to stop the attack at the waist. Why at the, at the wrist? Why the wrist? Because of the knife. You should be able to use the technique in all variations, in all angles, in all directions. That's it. The 360 defense conditions a fighter's perception reaction time. The time it takes to identify a threat and react against it. The average human being's time is 1.5 seconds. 360 defense training strengthens the actional connection in the brain, trimming a fighter's response time to nearly a tenth of a second. That's faster than a mouse click on your computer. Doing the 360 defense requires you keep your body in motion at all times, using your arms to defend different angles of attack. The key is keeping your arms at an oblique angle, with your hands open and straight, so that you don't take any blows straight on. Each is deflected down the angle of your forearm, which reduces its impact. So this is something that you'd use no matter what angle you're at. It doesn't matter if the person is straight onto you, to the side of you, to the back. You can use these techniques exactly. from anywhere. What we're quickly discovering is that Krav Maga isn't defined by one type of technique. Instead, it's built from the pieces of other martial arts and then modified for self-defense in combat situations. The basics of the 360 technique we just learned are incredibly similar to the Shurite Karate we studied in Okinawa, but modified to function against multiple opponents. But our training wasn't over yet. Eyal led us to a nearby beach to work on our next self-defense technique, a move we can use to defend against one of the most dangerous attacks, a choke. It's, uh, somebody's at your throat, and it's a matter of sometimes seconds until you lose conscience. And if you lose conscience, you know, we can do whatever. It's hard to defend yourself. Definitely. If someone's got their hands around your throat, they can do a lot of damage. Big problem. Now, uh, let you, I will let you feel a little bit. If you say, ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I feel that. Thank exactly. You. 
This soft tissue of the throat is one of the most vulnerable areas of your whole body. Just 76 pounds of compressive force to the throat is enough to cause total collapse of the larynx. That's less force than it takes to crumple a beer can. If you're choking me, natural, uh, this is natural behavior. Unfortunately, it is not strong enough. The trick to executing the choke defense is to not pull down, which is your first instinct. So these five fingers are going to come as close as possible to my neck, leaning on my shoulders. Instead, you pull your opponent's hands to the side, breaking the choke. My elbows are going backwards strongly, contraction of the neck muscles, chin a little bit down, stomp a little bit in the place and giving a first strike, which is usually a knee to groin. During the choke, your opponent is relying on his grip strength and outstretched arms to maintain the choke. The strength of your back and shoulder muscles is greater than the applied force of your opponent's hold, so it doesn't take much to break his grip. And the closer your hands are to your own neck, the greater the leverage. Nice. Good. Bill's a big, strong guy, and I don't want to have to fight force with force. Bill's going to choke me. I need to use technique to open his hands and just make those hands that he's putting all the pressure on move to the outside. This move is great. I really think it'll work for me with my size. I can get them off me right away, get under, throw a couple strikes, and then see who's around me who I can take on. The techniques we've learned today have opened our eyes to the intensity of Krav Maga and the merciless environment it's designed for.